everybody. So in this particular part of the final project, what you're, we're doing is creating a line drawing. Um, and then um, this line drawing is just a random to develop with values uh, in the next part of the final part of the final project. So the line drawing really allows you to develop your composition, um, you know, make changes to your composition to the perspective or add things or move things around easily before you start adding the shade and shadow. So that is, um, you know, the, the purpose of this particular part of the assignment. I was just taking it a little more slowly and allowing you to really develop your composition um, as best you can. Um, okay, so let's get started. Okay, it's Katie. All right, yeah, so you have a two-point perspective here, and I think you really developed the space nicely. You've got a really strong sense of um, deeper space in the background, and then some middle ground, and then these really nice elements in the foreground. That looks really good. And every part of the space you've really thought about, um, which is great. And the perspective to me looks very accurate, and you've got some really nice details here as well on the walls. Just bring, give it a little you know, some character and um, atmosphere. Um, you've got your scale figure, which is great. And uh, the only thing that you would need to add here, I think, to meet the requirements, I believe that you want to have an ellipse somewhere. Um, so maybe think about a place, you know, within the composition that you could add that. Um, You know, maybe even just something small, like on the table. You could maybe add just like a little kind of circular kind of object. Even just a little simple sphere would be a, a great use of, you know what I mean? Like just some kind of geometric sphere that you could shape. Just an idea if there's, you know, there's a lot of other possibilities here. So that's the main thing I think that you could add here. Um, and it looks like you've got your shadow vanishing point. Is, is it right here? Let's see if you can this in Photoshop. That to me looks like where it is. Is your window? Yeah, so there it is. So I would just add in um, your cast shadows, just kind of plot them before you start shading right on your figure here. And uh, it looks like maybe your chair too, right? Would have some cast shadows. That's a nice job you did that in here too. Uh, and I think that's it before you get started. So overall, I think this is looking really, really good. Okay, Abby, let's see. So you mentioned that you were having some trouble with the window. Yeah, so um, it looks like here's your vanishing point right here. I love the window seat idea. That's really nice. Um, and so yeah, so your window would actually so here this goes close, but it would actually this line here would actually this line here that you have drawn across would actually go up this way. Um and yeah, you know, it does look a little warped, but that's just you know that is the way that it works. So I would just draw it that way. Um sometimes I think when you you might just want to square it off your window instead of curving it if that looks a little better for you i might just do that but that is going to be you know the window is just going to be uh, with those lines so i think that's all you need to change here to me it looks like the rest of your perspective looks pretty accurate um and uh, i think you said you didn't know where to end your cast shadow so you're using the window right for your Okay, here's your direction. So this is where this is your cast shadow, your light source. You're picking that spot. So let me just undo that to get rid of those lines. I'm just going to mark this so I can see it. And then you want to have uh, your um, bottom point. So let's just pick a 
point here. So you just kind of go drop it down in any point sort of below the horizon line. Sometimes you can play with it. Let's just pick a point down here. So what actually happens here is instead of drawing the, the direction from, from the top here, it actually the direction goes from the bottom. Like so you use this point here. So for example, you would go this way. And let's just put an arrow there just so that we know it's the direction. Okay. And then this would go this way to here. Let's just draw that line here. So then that's the correct way to start with the, the line. And same thing with your bookcase. It would come from the bottom point. So you'd actually be drawing it this way. Okay. And then to um, the end the end of it would be where you take go through the top now and touch those points. So this is where it would end right there. And then sort of somewhere around there. So it sort of curve, you know, curve around this spot. Okay. Um, so I would probably just go back to unit four and just review the cast shadow vanishing point like that, just the exercise, just to make sure if this doesn't make enough sense. Something else that I love to do when I'm doing perspective is draw like an open, like a shape, um, you know, in the middle of the room, like a little, like you could add like a little coffee table here or just a little box, like a little chest or something, just a rectangular object. And you, and then cast your shadows from that point because when you have something in the middle of the room, you really see the cast shadows a lot more easily. And then um, use that to, um, you know, that information to just help you cast the rest of the shadows. Okay. So I think you're almost there, um, you know, and across here. So that's, yeah, so that's exactly right here. It looks like you started casting your shadows, so it would, it would go this way too, directionally. So, okay, I would just experiment with that a little bit more. Uh, in terms of your composition, just go back here. I think your composition looks really nice. Just, you know, yeah, so this is your edge of your composition. When you actually, I would darken that line just a little bit more. Um, and, um, you know, put the, yeah, just sort of draw in those edges so you know exactly where your composition is ending. Um, okay, those are, the, yeah, those are the sort of some of the things, like maybe adding, again, adding an object in. Um, you probably could have your composition go a little further downward, like instead of ending it here, you know, you might even just go down a little further so you open up the space, and that would allow you to add that extra object in there. But um, otherwise, I think you're you're coming it's coming along quite nicely. Lisa, I'm glad that you are spending time revising. That's awesome, and um, I think you have a nice composition here where you've dealt with all of the different spaces. You've got a lot of really beautiful items, a lot of um, character to your drawing. I would still just keep working a little bit more on your use of perspective. I wasn't able to find a horizon line or vanishing point, so I don't know if you used those to set them up. It feels like your points are um, sort of, you know, thought is maybe here, but it doesn't look like things are vanishing correctly. So, you know, I would just recommend really, um, it looks like you're wanting to work in two point perspective, right? I think that's what you're looking at here. So you want to really just set this up exactly like we set, we set it up back in um, Milestone 2, you know, so start off with a horizon line, put your vanishing points in, this is how you typically will start a drawing, just take your vanishing points as far out as you can. And then it looks like your wall, you want it to be back somewhere here. To me, that's just the, you know, the corner of your room. And then start, you know, setting up your drawing. Um, let's see, let's just kind of do it this way. Just like that's pretty similar to how you're doing it here. Um, okay, I'm coming out this way. Just get a different color here. Um, okay. 
So this would then be the beginning of your room right here. Okay, so you'd want to set that back wall up. Next slide. Okay, so here is your room now. And you could put it a little further back if you wanted to. Um, and then what you, to get a little more space, because this one gets a, a little cramped um, the way I've done it. So you could sort of you know, shorten your, like for example, make that wall a little shorter here and then have it come out this way. And then, you know, you would start to like plot all of your shapes on the ground, you know, so you'd start placing them in the, in the space. So I would, again, I'd spend a little more time thumbnailing, you know, just doing some thumbnails with the horizon line and vanishing point until you feel like you like the space. Again, it's really important that you have the horizon line and the vanishing point, and then you start building your composition from there. So I hope that helps. Keep, you know, I would just recommend going back to Milestone 2 and spending a little time with those tutorials, um, and then set your drawing up again. I think once you do, you're going to be in good shape to start your composition. I think you have all the required elements. It's just a matter of getting that perspective down. Okay, Rebecca. Okay, you also have a very nice space that's starting to be developed, you know, good elements, lots of detail. You've really filled the space, which is great. Um, and I just kind of reverse engineered, as you have your horizon line and your vanishing point here. Um, so I would probably just work a little bit more on this perspective before you go in, you started the shading, which you, you didn't want to go into shading at this point so that you could continue to correct your line drawing. So at this point, I might just mock this up again before you spend more time shading it and just correct some of the perspective. Um, for example, so here's your vanishing point. We'll talk about the placement of vanishing points in a minute, but so it looks like here, here for example, so this, uh, let's start with this um, entertainment center here. It's getting pretty accurate. There's a little, you can see there's a little places here that that's right. Some of these need to be like this line here needs to be corrected. This line, you know, just make sure all of your lines are going to the vanishing point up here at the top. Um, you know, really, really trying to get this as accurate as possible. So that looks pretty good. This looks good. You know, so that looks really good. Um, here is the line here. It's a little bit out of my view, but let's see if that's in there. Yeah, so um, this, this feels a little bit you know, this all this element in here seems like it's not following a, a perspective line. So you want to just kind of correct that. Now, one of the reasons I think you might be having a little bit of problem with it is that this particular vanishing point is very close up. It's almost it's in your composition. So I would move it out, out to the left a little bit more, like you've done here. That's good. Um, you know, even here, or you can if um, a trick, you know, is you can tape your drawing down wherever you want to draw on, like on your drawing board, and so it doesn't move. And then, you know, you can make a mark outside of your page, like on a piece of tape, so that you get your vanishing point a little further out. And then I think you'll find it more comfortable to do some of these shapes because this is so this is so close to the vanishing point. It's going to start warping and looking like your sofa. It's going to look a little weird um, as you as you do it. That, that, Almost accurate there with your coffee table. So I would just kind of keep playing with it. Um, you know, use this composition, but just redraw it again. Just start with lines. Don't do any shading till you get really accurate perspective. And then, you know, go in and do your cast shadows. Um, and then do your line, Your start doing your shading after that. So just a little more work here to kind of keep correcting it. This is really that's the challenging part to get everything in place. But I think you've, you've got a lot of you know, your space is developed nicely. You've got good elements. It's just a matter of making sure it's correct. Hey, Jara, let's see. So you mentioned you might make your walls a bit taller. I could see that. Yeah, you definitely could do that. Although this looks okay, but I can see what you mean, maybe to give yourself a little more space. And uh, I think you said um, the cedar needs a little adjusting. 
you know, maybe a little bit. I think your figure looks fine. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about your figure. Um, so a few things that you, you want to work with before uh, kind of correcting with the line drawing. I think your perspective is, is accurate in the majority of places, maybe just a few areas. So you've got a really, I really appreciate, I can see your vanishing point, your horizon line. That makes it so much easier. Um, so like this wall right here, you would just make sure that it's vanishing just a tiny bit off there, but it makes it makes a difference. So it actually would go up there. So you just want to be really accurate. That maybe and down here too, right here. So it would actually join more like that. Okay. And then this wall looks really accurate. That looks great. But then this wall right here would actually be coming from this point here. This right here, here, yeah. So here, wherever you want it to go. I think this one looks pretty accurate. A little bit off. So here and here. So join up there. That's where that would begin. Or wherever you want to place it. But something that, and then this line here. That's that's so this would come. So this line here would come here and here. Just kind of making sure you get all those lines right. Um you know, follow, and you have a more kind of complex composition because you've got a wall. Um, so you kind of can trace these lines a little bit more. So that's what I would do. Your window, that looks really accurate. I think that's the main thing. And then this table then would move too. And so use the footprint to create the table. Like you've got the rug here, which is great. I think that looks very accurate. Um, but you know, you want to start with a footprint for your table before drawing the table. And a footprint would be, let's just get rid of all these red lines here. So, you know, let's say you wanted to create a cable. Start with creating the footprint on the floor. And I'm going to make the table here because it's an open space, so it's easier to see. So, let's just make a table. Now we've got the footprint of the table. And now you just start drawing a box. Remember back in unit two how we um, created those those boxes? That's the same idea here. So then you would just draw your your box shape in. So you box the whole thing in first before you know you. Um, before you start drawing the details. Just kind of put the guidelines in, okay? And you could do that on the wall or wherever you want to. Um, and then once you have that, then you can just sort of like do the table chart, do the legs, but then you have a very accurate sense of the perspective, okay? So I would just go back and just keep revising it. You know, again, referring back to that um, two-point exercise with the, the shapes that we just did. And uh, yeah, just keep playing with it. Okay, so once you've done that, um, I think your light source, uh, I don't know, I think, I can't see, I think this, is this going to be your light source? That would be a good place to put it. So you just, again, you mark off your lines, just go back to milestone four to, you know, put your dots in there um, for your cast shadow vanishing point and your light source, and then just start casting those in the appropriate place. Okay. So I would just keep working on that just a little bit more before you do the shading. Okay, Sabrina. Well, I like the changes you made in your composition. You've added some really nice elements here that bring in the foreground space, like this element right here. Um, that's that's exactly what I was thinking of, you know, having you do. Um, and uh, you know, you mentioned the stairs and the sofa. I think they look good. I don't think you have any problems with them. I would I would keep them. Um, you know, think, when things get to the background too, what you can often do is just let them be more, you know, distant objects. They don't have to be really detailed, so you may not even need to add too much more to them. Um, so, uh, and I, I checked your perspective. It looks very accurate. The only thing I would do here is to evaluate your light source. You know, pick a light source. It looks like you've done a little shading, um, but really pick a light source and use it to cast your shadows. You know, is it is it coming from here? Um, where is it coming from? Pick one single light source 
and then cast your shadows from that light source. You know, really try to accurately cast them like we did back in week four. And then if you want to have like some kind of accent light, like what you're doing here, it looks like a string of maybe Christmas lights. Is that what's happening? Um, you can do that. You know, they can be little pockets of white in your drawing, but use the cast shadow, the single cast shadow, you know, whatever, um, you know, whatever that's going to be, you know, however you're going to place, where you're going to place it, and do that on all the objects. So it's casting on the floor and you're using it as your major light source because that is what's going to give your drawing dimension is that single light source. Even on reality, we have multiple light sources, but if you look at most perspective drawings, like if you Google perspective drawings or architectural drawings, you'll notice they mostly work with a single light source just because it gives you that sense of space in your drawing. So that's the only thing here I think you need to revise before you move to adding the value. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think otherwise, it, you know, again, you've got a really interesting space, you know, this basement space. I think it turned out really well. Um, and I really like what you did too with the, the page, you know, with this long um, sort of wide space, panoramic space, which really does add to the effect of the, um, you know, low kind of um, shallow, like the, the shorter, the height of the basement, you know, that wadded basement shell. So yeah, okay, look forward to seeing your next version. Okay, Euphemia. Shadows, this is your country. Um, okay, let's take a look here. Yeah, and yeah, you know, sometimes when at this point you do want to keep your lines light, it is sometimes hard to photograph or scan light lines. Um, and uh, but I can see that you've used, you know, the construction technique, and you've been really. That's the main thing. Even if I can't see every single line, the fact that you've constructed it accurately is is always the most important thing. Once you start adding your light and more of your shade and shadow, everything will be clearer. Um, yeah, okay, so I think you said you did a one point. It's really good. Yeah, this, I remember this, yeah. You had this interesting back wall, and then all of these um, furniture coming towards us. Good sense of space. I love the beams in the ceiling. That's a nice touch. Which gives a, you know, sometimes the ceilings, most of the time our ceilings in, you know, residential spaces are blank. But when you're drawing, you have the opportunity to add anything you want. And so, Things you can add to the ceiling, like beams or recessed lights or things like that, can really add to your entire composition by you know creating a creating some visual interest up there. So that's a great idea. Um, and also too, you know, the flooring too. That's something that you can just so easily do with the vanishing point. And I think that's a great great touch. So yeah, I like the way you just kind of work with the vanishing point in adding these kind of gridded details. Uh, let's see. So I think the comment was shadows uh, made by the distance was the correct. It's a little hard to see just because the lines are like um but Into some Photoshop to get this kind of closer. Hmm. So, you know, yeah, okay, so I see. So here's your lamp, and then here is what you're talking about, I think, up here. You know, in spaces like that with cast shadows, sometimes what you can do is just visualize it. Um, the cast shadows, I think, are most useful on things like, you know, on big ob bigger objects like the floor, casting your, your shadows on the floor. And sometimes when you get into these nooks and crannies, you can just sort of visualize where the light would fall, you know, like you would on top of a sofa. 
you know, like, is it going to be a little darker on this side, and then it's going to be lighter here, you know, maybe it's going to be somewhere in between these two up here, you know what I mean? So you're kind of, I think sometimes that can be helpful, um, is to just kind of use your own understanding of how a light source would hit an object, uh, and kind of like, use the cast shadow construction again for your your bigger objects on your floor um, for example um, because ultimately you know ultimately uh it it is about creating a sense of realism in the drawing which i think is combined with your own perception of reality you know like a situation where you have a light source and like some shelves in your house, you know, that you can look at and see how that works combined with the formula. Because um, it's all just about making it look natural and real. And I, I do think that those two sources of information can come together. Um, so that's probably what I would do with that. Um, and okay, I think it looks really good. I think you're ready to move on to the adding the shading and I, I think you have enough detail here I don't think you really need to add anything more to it um, unless you you know you think of something but I think that you'll have a lot of you know the space is developed very nicely at this point okay Lauren let's see okay your concept so oh I like that so the interior of an apartment lobby that's a great idea person's living location on the way to the front door sophisticated lobby Great. Uh, okay, so let's go to the light source question. Um, oh yeah, so I definitely think this works that way as that kind of it has that sort of minimal feeling. Uh, you know, there's always the kind of little planting, um, which I think is you know a hallmark of uh, a lobby. Um, so I would say, so I think your back area here looks really good, very accurate. I would add some more detail in here. I don't think that maybe this is working quite yet. Um, so I might just, you know, do something like um, maybe put in a chair or, you know, maybe a couple chairs, even simple little benches like, would, you know, would be, you know, you could start just by taking your footprint and um, just kind of, this is on the floor, just starting with a footprint here of something, you know, whatever you want, but you could make it very simple, you know, maybe a bench or, um, you know, something that will can fill this space. And you could even go a little closer than I have so you could get a foreground, more of a foreground element. You know, whatever you like. If I'm just kind of block, I, I always start by just blocking things in um, so that you can start seeing the shape, you know, whatever you, whatever you think. Um, just to, it's not very accurate, but you know, just to kind of sort of activate this space, maybe it could go a little further, so it kind of pop out of the edge of the page, so you'd have some kind of element. So this could be like um, anything you want. I was just thinking of maybe a lobby bench or something like that. So I would probably think of doing, a, you know, a couple of elements in here um, just to give yourself more space. And that way, too, when you do that, um, I think it'll make it easier to do cast shadows. So you mentioned about light sources. Like as I mentioned to other folks, you have three lights here. I would, I would just tend to either only have one on, <laughs> one light on. Um, or set up another light source, like, you know, sometimes lobbies, maybe they have like a standing lamp somewhere, just so that you have only one light source, because three light source is such a pain. You don't want to do that. Um, maybe you have like a little lamp on this table here, you know, that you could do, or, you know, by the bench, or um, you could add a little, you know, window here, and that could be your light source. So that's what I'd recommend doing. But I love what you, I love the recessed lighting idea in terms of, you know, having something on the ceiling, but maybe keep, maybe keep them off for the sake of the drawing, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so that's the main thing, I think, here. I think your, uh, you know, your drawing setup is good. Um, you're working accurately with perspective. 
Um, so I just would add it maybe a few more elements and then decide on a light source. Zeus, let's see, it's right here. I decided to go to college rooms. Oh yeah, that's great. Young student living spaces. The light source you will use is the lamp in the left. The TV will have tall bed plates and might add more objects. Make this or add the shadows after this. Okay. Yeah, good. This looks really good. Very, uh, you know, um, I think you have enough detail in here. Uh, maybe you could have a little bit more foreground, although these elements are coming towards us, so they would kind of, they do work it in bringing us into the space. I think you've done a nice job here. I like what you've done with the ceiling and just all of the, you know, details here. Very accurate. It definitely has a dorm room feeling. I love the idea of like, this looks like a walk-in closet here, how you've shown a little bit of the inside here of the clothes hanging. Yeah, I think you're ready to go here. Uh, yeah, cast, this is a great light source, so just, um, you know, cast your shadows from that, and uh, I, I think you're pretty much ready to go from there. You may uh, just want to, you may, you may just want to um, say just a little bit more about your concept for it, like what kind of space it will be in terms of just the vibe, um, which I think you probably have a good idea already. Uh, but your sketches look very good, very interesting kind of different uh, possibilities here, one point, two point, different compositions. You've set them up accurately, and it looks like you've gone with the upper, lower, yeah. Um, yeah, it looks good. Very nice. Um, I like your uh, sense of space. You know, this space is your main space, and then looking here into this space looks really good. I like the way you've worked with the vanishing points to create. It looks like may maybe you're going with like this kind of flooring, um, which I think is a great way of working with perspective, and you've got some interesting details in the ceiling. and artwork and a lot of comp you know a lot of personality this to me looks like a very modern space so maybe this you know your concept is just a modern clean um very organized space which looks good so i would just say i'll pick up your light source if you haven't yet done that wherever you want that to be like maybe it's going to be these windows um or somewhere else you know and then just cast your shadows in your drawing um before you start your shading, but I, otherwise, uh, I think you're you're good to go. Oh, yeah, you want to have um, a scale figure and uh, in an ellipse, if at all possible. Although I, you know, we could say that counts as an ellipse. So I think the scale figure is the one you want to work with, and it could just be anywhere. Just like scale figures can be just very simple elements; they don't have to be detailed at all. They're just a very sort of basic shape that indicate. Um, the height of a person in somewhere in the space. Okay, um, that's it, everybody. So um, I look forward to seeing the next version of this. Just remember that the deadline has been changed from Sunday to Monday to give you enough, some extra time because I was a little bit late on the um, critique. So um, look forward to seeing what you're coming up with, and uh, yeah, see you then.